Hello and welcome to Bad Has Barra, the world's most moral podcast. Uh, I am your host, Matt Lieb. How y'all doing out there? Thank you once again for listening to this podcast uh, or watching it. If you're watching it on fucking YouTube, I'm st- cool. I'm glad you are. I get demonetized every time. Uh, but, you know, that's that's fine because I, I don't do it for the money. I do it uh, for the love of the game. That game being um, my wife getting mad that I'm podcasting too much. But whatever. Thank you. Uh, and if you're like one of the people who is out there watching the show and you're, you know, you want to contribute in some way. Um, before I was plugging the Frotcast Patreon. That's the one where that I, that's what I usually do. Show I do the, a The Wire Rewatch podcast. I'm not supposed to be doing this shit. I'm supposed to be talking about TV. But then Israel had to go and do a genocide. So now... Now I have to scream about it into a mic. Um, and if you want to support this show, there is a new Patreon. And uh, it is just for this show. It is patreon.com slash badhasbara. You go there. You subscribe. You get all the shows ad-free. And uh, you get, like, bonus episodes and stuff. And I'm sure I'll sprinkle in some other type of content that's, like, bonus. I'm not sure. Whatever. But subscribe to it. It'll be great. It's so worth it because you get to help feed my baby. I got a baby who needs food. Um, Also, if you are in the Sacramento area, uh, Sunday, March 17th at 7 p.m., I will be at the Sacramento Punchline headlining with my wife, Francesca Fiorentini. Uh, We are co-headlining. It's going to be a lot of fun. March 17th, SAC uh punchline please come out tell your friends it's a seven o'clock show it's i think it's the saint patty's day which is i think is a perfect day to come out to a comedy show because you know you're already drunk and then you know you can spend that two drink minimum on fucking you know coca-colas or something you could sober up at the show i mean you could even sleep i don't really care there's a i think there's a sleep train right next to the sack punch it's in a mini mall it's a, a weird location for a comedy club, but it's great. So please come, come out. Ticket link will be in bio. Uh, Finally, uh, there is this page that I was uh, made aware of from someone who follows me on Twitter. Uh, A couple of people are cataloging uh, all of the war crimes (laughs) that Israel is doing like bit by bit. They're creating like a, a doc that grows by the day. Uh, you can find all of these at uh, crimesbyisrael.com. Uh, they also have a uh, official Twitter page. Uh, check it check it out. It's kind of nice to have it all in list form in case you're just like, I wonder what crimes they did. Uh, it's nice. Uh, I mean, it's depressing. It's not fun, but it's something to read and maybe share with your family in case they had any questions about what's going on in Israel. Okay, guys. It's time to start the show, and I have two great guests. This is all comedians today. Today, we're just doing stand-up comics. Uh, Two wonderful guests from both sides of the country. We have from the Palestine pod, Michael Schertzer, and from uh, from New York, we have a guy who's got a show called That's Deep on Complex and a podcast called Jaded Forum, Yadoye Travis. Let me introduce all of y'all right now. One second. Boom. Yo. What's up, guys? I thought you were about to say from both sides of the political spectrum. I was like, wait, 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 no. No. you're supposed to be my Zionist. No, 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 no. I need you to be pro-Israel. We I have can't. to sh- show all sides. No, I can't. I don't know how to. I, I can't. <laughs> oh, it's so easy, dude. It's like the easiest job. You just go, uh, nah-uh. Every time someone says Israel did something bad, you just ignore facts and 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 etc. Yeah, profit and profit and profit. Profit comes from it very easily. What's up, Michael? What's up? It does take a lot less thinking to oh be on God. It does, man. What a I job. 
I had somebody, I had another comic ask me about black Israelites in the context of this, uh, of this genocide <laughs> a few days ago. And I was like, yeah. what were they asking? Are they complicit or what they, is, <laughs> I don't know what his question. I think his, his question was just, who are they? Yeah. Right. <laughs> where can we where, get the intro first? Yeah. Where yeah. are they in the mix of the whole genocide thing? Yeah, actually, I haven't heard much from them in a while. I feel like they've been kind of drowned out by Zionist voices. Like, they're watching what Zionists are saying, and they're like, holy shit, maybe just, let's just let yeah. them. Let's wait it out. Let's wait it out. Let's hold the, let them hold the mic for a little bit, because they're seeing some crazy shit. Yeah. They're also just... mostly, like, in-person performers, yeah. right? They don't really have a social media presence. So yeah. you don't, I've, like, I've... hear a ton. I've really seen a lot of them like third hand, just people walking by Barclays Center. And yeah. it, that's kind of where they are, you know? Yeah. And you it's know like what? it's like a throwback to the old school of comedy where it's like, yeah. I don't need social media. And I kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wonder good. if they're like pissed off that like now you have to make clips in order to be a black. Exactly. Like, yeah. They're all starting to sound like Sebastian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. No, I don't I, understand I, these kids anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they got to get a captions app. They got to fucking start doing social. It's it's. Check, it's you don't know you're one of the original people, aren't you? Embarrassed? <laughs> <laughs> Are you not embarrassed? <laughs> aren't you embarrassed? <laughs> yeah. Um. So you guys are both comics, uh, and you are both people who actually say out loud things about israel which uh i don't know about y'all but i find that to be a rarity in this industry um like it's there's a handful of people that i've seen who have like full-throated like said the word zionist out loud for the most uh -huh. part i see a lot of like um donation link in bio for most comics that i know like to gaza um and that's kind of the most you'll get um what 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 is what's it like in new york because i feel like la is fucking has lost its goddamn mind like the comedy scene out here has seemed to yeah. either be silent or they're just being drowned out by the like biggest psychos you can imagine um i mean it feels like new york is a little bit more on the side of um comics being very quiet mm. and granted i say this with um comics in my personal circle that i keep around me have all been pretty vocal about it um right. people like i mean mohana del shaky uh zubi ahmed uh i could just like they're all just they're all just brown Etheria comics Koob. you know Etheria Koob. yeah they're all just brown comics who like have a dog in the fight you know right yeah, yeah. like outside of that everybody else is like even but face also to shout face. out really quick so, shout out katie boyle she's been posting about katie palestine boyle, and yes. like has held it down for many years even before october 7th nice. yes she absolutely has um yeah it just it, it feels like uh the broad um the broad uh message from new york comics is like is kind of it's <laughs> like even face to face people people don't feel comfortable yeah saying what's going on you know yeah. um it, like and it's very weird like i i i i i have uh spoken up publicly enough that comics have come and like confronted me for mm. v for with various levels of you know animosity i've been yeah. called anti-semitic and then i've been called then i've had people just come and be like hey man why don't you just let's talk about it face to face we don't have to talk about each other on the internet it's like i was like okay man but like the uh, the funniest thing I've noticed is like you'll talk to a Zionist or a Zionist apologist comedian, and a hundred percent of the time, I leave the conversation feeling like, "Well, we got nowhere," <laughs> right? Yeah. And then I I'll talk to somebody else about this conversation, and they'll be like, "Yeah, so and so said y'all had a great talk." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, wow. that's only because their assumption is uh, that while you're talking, you're going to do an anti-Semitic crime against them. Like they're coming yes. in thinking like anyone who says anything pro-Palestinian must be a little bit insane. And then as yes. soon as you are not insane, they're like, oh, shit. OK, that was a great talk. We learned yeah. nothing. 
But yeah. it's like they're having these conversations to confirm that you're not the hateful person they assume you are. Right. And you're having this conversation to be like, hey, could you stop endorsing a genocide, please? <laughs> a genocide that's actively happening in front of your face. Could you just like stop, please? Yeah, that'd be nice. You know? And they're also trying to silence you, right? They're trying mm -hmm. to like get yeah. close to you and be like, hey, this is why you shouldn't be posting this, actually. Yeah. They're trying to gaslight you into thinking, you're not seeing a live stream genocide. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. But that's what Zionists do, right? Like they steal your energy, right? Over there, they steal land, right? They steal people's lives. Whoa. But over here, they try and steal your energy. Yeah, they're yeah. they're occupying my fucking, like, just my emotional energy. That's what right. they're doing. They're, they're living hands. free everywhere because they're squatters everywhere they go. Like, <laughs> they're they're like... squatters everywhere they go, rather. <laughs> yeah. I feel like every couple of weeks I have to, like, bust out a new book to read because i gaslight myself into thinking i don't know what i'm talking about yes yeah because i've yeah. had so many people be like are you sh are you sure about are you sure about <laughs> the thing that you just said with so much confidence are you sure about that yeah are you sure yeah. about the thing that you're sure about yeah. yeah 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 no it's weird the level of gaslighting uh of yourself that you can do because like i i've gone through the same thing too where i will be questioning myself like Wait, am I sure that 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 some of those kids didn't deserve to die? And then no, I'll be like, "What the? That. No, don't fuck? do that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what go. I mean? No, 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 no. We don't like that. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Of course, I won't be associated with that clip. No, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. No, 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 no. I don't like that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that that's like the level of insanity that it comes to, where you're just like, I'm definitely not wrong about this, right? And then you yeah. need to like, then you need to recenter yourself and just be like yeah i'm i'm for sure on the right side of history here but it is weird how easy the gaslighting can happen i always mm -hmm. find it's better to listen in the case of like human rights and human suffering to civil rights heroes you yeah. know so i feel pretty comfortable being on the side of dr angela davis malcolm mm -hmm. x kwame Ture, etc Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, but, but Michael, they they want to they want to argue with Nelson Mandela about apartheid, and I enjoy that for them. Yeah, yeah, have fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting take. I respect it, but I don't respect it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, white guy, tell Nelson Mandela he doesn't know about apartheid. I think yeah. the craziest thing Great about word. it too is the people who are doing it are not necessarily uh, the people you would have expected to do it um at any other time uh, the, like it's the liberal zionists are the ones who always like blow my fucking mind because at, at every other issue that they have ever uh virtue signaled about they uh have sort of made it clear at least to me at some point I, I would be like well yeah that person is not like a scumbag who would like talk down to people who actually lived in apartheid uh, and you know know what they're talking about but then uh i don't know man last uh four months i feel like uh, how many uh how many people do you know personally who have l done a complete fascist pivot michael who i mean it's a lot right <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> It does feel as though I'm completely surrounded by fascists, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there are also people who are going the other way, right? There are mm -hmm. people who are like, yeah, no, I just didn't know much about it. And then I like read one thing and it was so obvious to me that like Palestine is in the right, that they have a right to defend themselves, that they're being occupied. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that this is a genocide that's happening, you know, so it's like. For all the fascists that are, you know, accumulating, there are also people who are interested in liberation. Right. Yeah. I have. Um, I think as I've gotten older, I've really had to reassess my <clears throat> my understanding of the word liberal. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because like at this point in my life, I had no expectation that liberal Zionists had would would come out on the right side of this, at least right. not like whole cloth. If that makes yeah. sense. What even like, is a liberal Zion? What is it like biodegradable bullets? What are we talking about? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, like what does that even what does that yeah. even mean? It's a climate know? conscious <laughs> occupation, you know? It means like, like a, I yeah. believe in Israel's right to do what it's doing, but I wish it would do it nicer. Yeah. And that that is always like for me, like I've seen people like that and I've been like, well, they must have a limit. 
right? Are those the folks that are blocking aid trucks into Gaza right now? Are those <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. Is yeah. that them? Are those the liberal Zionists or which ones? <laughs> you know, yeah. actually, it's a coalition. Uh, they, uh, The left and the right in Israel have gotten together and they've decided wow. uh, to bipartisanly um, block aid into That's great. Gaza. They can decide wow. on anything except a government, huh? Pretty good. Right, or a Love constitution. That. Love that. <laughs> But yeah, man, it's uh, it's been interesting comedy because of the people that I've known personally. Like I, you know, I've talked about this before, but like I, uh, I had people calling me who I know personally, who like know my, you know, my baby daughter, and were like, "You shouldn't be saying anything about this because your baby daughter is Jewish, and Hamas would kill your daughter." And um, yeah, they always wanted to like try and like. Pro they like, like to project about, their like, own yeah. weird fantasies like onto weird. Hamas. They like to outsource their uh, war crimes to <laughs> like weird proxy threat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, it's not me doing it. I would never, because I'm good. I just supported genocide. But these fucking people. Yeah, don't it's, fucking do it. It is interesting. I've had a lot of friends uh, or former friends reach out to me, uh, especially uh, especially on October eighth when I was. I think I, I was one of these people that was like, okay, here's the broader historical context that people are not thinking about right now. Right. Uh, and, and they're jumping straight to calling this uh, nine, the Israel's 9-11 or whatever. Right, yeah. Um, so here's it was the Israel's 9-11 because it was an inside, an inside job. job. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> 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 um, I had, uh, I had somebody I went to college with literally say, now is a weird time to add context, don't you think? I was like, well, <laughs> I no. That. That's I hilarious. I don't think that's, that's ever weird. So emblematic of like Zionist thinking where it's yeah. like, no, focus on me. Let me yeah. just have my blind rage for a second. Please. Yeah. And every, this has happened multiple times now and every single time it's like, they kind of spew the, uh, the the zion the hasbro version of how how they were raised zionist just all the they rattle off all the different empires that yeah. that ruled over that land as though that is in any way determinant determinant of who is living in the land right yeah. mm -hmm. um and then you confront them with that fact and then you confront them with you know the balfour Decl declaration the fact that uh israel was not created in response to the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the Zionist movement collaborated with Nazis mm -hmm. to uh, to extract a limited population of uh, of Jews who could who were able bodied enough to help build the state of Israel. And you confront right. them with all of these facts and then they just go silent. Yeah. And on top of that, of the time. they turned back uh, refugees from the Holocaust because they were not fit enough to serve in their war crimes army. So they yes. sent them back on a death march. Yeah. Yeah. And they also uh, continue to treat uh, survivors in Israel like dog shit. Yes. One third mm -hmm. live in poverty and That's they rely right. on volunteers who do mutual aid to bring them food. Which uh -huh. is a crazy thing to think about, uh, you know, just based on the amount of uh, mileage that they've gotten from exploiting their traumatic stories, <laughs> that they're not at least going to like, I don't know, give them revenue every time you mention Holocaust, right? You think like, it'd be shouldn't easier. They get a cut? Yeah. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> I was just thinking it should be easier to buy onions than rockets, right? Yeah. 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 You'd, You'd think, think so. You would think. You'd think I don't so. know. Yeah. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, so your experiences in 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 comedy. The reason you know uh, that I'm asking about it is because I'm like at this point, I feel like I can count on you know one hand like people who uh, are not either neither Jewish nor Arab who are openly talking about uh, Zionism and whatnot. And that's one of the reasons uh, you do it. When I started seeing your posts, I was like, fucking. Thank you, because it is. Uh, <clears throat> I feel like the amount of people who are silent in comedy because they feel like, well, number one, they're they're, they're like, I want to have a job, but number two, they're like, um, they feel like they don't have a dog in this fight or whatnot. Like, what yeah. what is uh, what has been your experience with uh, anyone else? Do you, do you have um, friends who are neither Jew Jewish nor Arab who are? Um, uh, comics like who, i want to know who's out there like <laughs> i, I want to know that we're not that alone you know what i'm saying um i mean everybody i know who is is uh vocal 
that is not Jewish or Arab, most of them are outside of comedy. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it is about comedians where they are such, uh, where they have such, such cowards. Per, like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they just have this, this insane tunnel vision. You know, it's like, for the for people who are supposed to be modern day philosophers or mm -hmm. whatever bullshit title you try to assign to comedians, they have some of the limited the most limited perspective I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's like, because to me, I I think about it and it feels it feels very clear to me that this has direct impact on my life, and I think people um, people take that realization to maybe to say like oh well you're only doing it because it affects you directly i'm just like well yeah that's why people should do yeah. things I, I, like, yeah, I don't, yeah. like i think we have to reassess our relationship with this term like with this term selfishness or, right. or, or self-centered or whatever because like that's where the idea of mutual aid even comes from is that is that if i help you in like a con community in a communal institutional sense it also bears fruit back on me you know what i mean right it's yeah. not i'm not just doing this because um because i'm such a charitable person i don't have this altruistic mindset right. i'm not i'm not doing this self-sacrificial bullshit that people try to force on you to like to kind of moralize your care for other people mm -hmm. it has an effect on my life and i think uh, i think if if Zionists thought about it that way and realized that dehumanizing other people also has a dehumanizing effect on yourself, mm -hmm. you know, if you read somebody like Paulo Freire who says that explicitly or any other radical or even not even, not even that radical thinker, yeah, um, I think they would realize what they are doing to themselves and how this whole Zionist movement is in itself more anti-Semitic than than anything i've seen on the ground yeah. here or yes. there or anywhere you know yeah 100%. it's so wild that comedians are like we are the last line of defense for the freedom of speech <laughs> also shut the fuck up about palestine yeah right yeah, yeah. it's like i just want to say the n-word man i just that's all I <laughs> yeah want. I uh, yeah they moved I didn't to know austin be like, i just had a specific thing i wanted to do <laughs> yeah i just didn't right. want to say exactly what it was but i'm just trying to say that word yeah, I didn't know I was going to have to stand up for shit in the real world. I'm just trying to bring the R word back, you know, yeah. like, well, I didn't know that, like, it could affect my career in this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it is. It is interesting seeing it, too, because uh, the, I, uh, there's like a level of cowardice that seems to be kind of like uh, everywhere. The, the Grammys recently happened, and I wanted to talk about that today. Um, because I, I have mixed feelings about, about everything. So, uh, the Grammys happened yesterday and, um, this was another award show now that we've had. I think this is a, the second like big award show, um, in which basically no one said anything about, uh, what was happening in Gaza. And the closest we got was Annie Lennox, Ari. Um, which, uh, I have a, Ar it's Ari it Annie, Lennox. It was Annie Lennox. There's also Annie really? Lennox. Yeah. Oh, it was Annie? I thought it was Ari Lennox. My bad. Wait, who's Ari Lennox? Ari Lennox is an R&B singer. She's oh, a okay. Yeah, I just I read know. it. I just read something. I thought it was my bad. <laughs> nah, nah, hey, nah. I mean, listen, we should also ask Ari. I didn't even know there was an Ari yeah, Lennox. Was, was, she not, was she nominated? <laughs> I would love to know what she thinks. She, she's yeah. been nominated. I don't know if she was nominated this year. I don't think she had a record come out. Well, so far mm. we have one Lennox um who's cool uh and said uh this which i have a uh clip of this was the uh grand speech that was given last night peace fire peace in the world cool um so listen i'm not gonna say bad i'm glad someone said something um but it you know this the also, I've got, have... a, I've got to unsend some messages to Ari Lennox right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, like the, the, you know, I, I'm always happy when someone says something. I think it is a big deal uh, to say anything. The, the issue that I've been having is I've been watching kind of like just, uh, uh, I read this article in the New Arab that said something along the lines of, uh, this is what we call like uh, bread breadcrumb solidarity, where you just have to kind of piece together where whether or not someone is 
uh, pro-Palestinian based on like just little bits, little yeah. tiny hints uh, like Taylor Swift going to uh, Rami's like stand up show that was a uh, benefit for Gaza, you know, um, and then like saying ceasefire, peace in the world. It's like I, ag of course, agree with those sent sentiments, um, but. You know, she doesn't say Gaza. It's kind of, I would say, mm -hmm. fairly milk toast if it were any other situation. If it were yeah. any other situation, yep. uh, but that did not stop uh, Noah Tishby from doing this. She was also at the Grammys for oh, some sick. fucking reason. Uh, and uh, this is what she had to say about uh, the grand speech. So uh, tonight, the Grammys were hijacked in favor of Hamas agenda as singer Any Lennox called for. I'm sorry, but can just real quick, um, she can say hijacked, but she can't say Hamas without putting the ch in it. She did. She kind of said hijacked. You didn't did hear it. Did she say? Uh, <laughs> let me hear. Agenda as <laughs> any Lennox <laughs> were hijacked in favor of Hamas agenda. Tonight, the Grammys were hijacked in favor of Hamas. She, she, a, a, a small bit. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just like uh, traumatized, and I only hurt. Like I just hurt. You're it. traumatized with any Israeli who says the H sound now. Yeah, yeah. Hamas agenda as singer Any Lennox called for a ceasefire, denying Israel's right to defend itself, and also not calling for the release of the hostages. So basically, giving Hamas exactly what they wanted. You know, I think that next time a singer wants to do something that's good for humanity, they should probably call on the release of innocent women and a baby and a toddler from the hands of a genocidal terrorist organization. I think that's probably a good idea. Innocent women and a baby and a toddler. Is that who's left alive? Yeah, those the are the ones groups? that they haven't killed through their the, massive the bombing. Four to five. Right. And cool. if they try and surrender with white flags, yeah, talking Hebrew, they will be gunned down and murdered Sick. by their own army. So. Well, I mean, Sick. to be fair to the IDF, they thought that they were Palestinian civilians. And they were. Oh, yeah, that's what, that's oh, what they were speaking cool. Hebrew. Right, uh, right, right. Because. Perfect. Listen, cool. they thought they had learned Hebrew in order to entrap them because uh, yeah, I know they had their shirts off so that they yeah. were showing they weren't having any weapons and they had their hands up to show there was nothing in their hands. But, um, you know, Hamas, they're implanting so wild. time bombs inside the stomachs of their own people and then teaching them Hebrew. So mm, you never she fucking was like know, dog. She was like, that's exactly what Hamas wanted. And don't you know, Hamas is always so plugged into the Grammys. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. They've got yeah. nothing else going on. She got a long it, forehead, by the way. She got a really too long. long. <laughs> I, didn't, I, like, yeah. I didn't even. She's got a five minute to sure. settle on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they better build a point in the middle and <laughs> stop any traffic going halfway. <laughs> <laughs> Little Gaza strip of hair. Um, yeah, no, it, it, it like watching that video for me i was like it is this is an insane thing because I, I i don't even know who this hasbara is for anymore because that uh you watch that and like hasbara used to be for like nor normies you know it was like mm. uh, a regular non-informed american audience who would just be like you know oh yeah israel you know israel good Th she's like yelling about someone hijacking the grammys because they said the 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 word ceasefire and is expecting non psychopaths to go along with her. You know, also, I mean? she's on say, stage. Yeah, she's she's on say. stage, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Today, today's flight was hijacked by the pilot <laughs> yeah. and taken and taken to its normal destination. We got yeah, off yeah. safely in Miami. Yeah, that's the Thank Zionist you. version of hijacking. But it's uh, it's. Did just, she even say ceasefire? By the way, she didn't say that, right? She did. She does at the beginning. Uh, it's it, it's happened so fast that the clip doesn't fully have it. Ceasefire. Okay. Artist uh, for ceasefire. Uh, okay. Peace in the world. Whole world. I, again, I credit where credit is due. Annie Lennox, you said ceasefire. You get credit for it. But just the the peace in the world part, I'm just like, just say fucking Gaza. Why yeah. can't? Why is it so impossible to say where a ceasefire should happen? It's like when people say people of color when they mean black. Just say, yeah. just say <laughs> it, man. Just say the thing that you mean. Be specific. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, I I mean it's a it's a it's a great way to like mush everyone together, and uh, you know just kind of like uh, you know. Peace, wherever there happens to be a war going on. Yeah. Who knows where? I don't know. I'm just singing songs out loud. But you know uh, what, yeah. what? What bothers me about all this is that the whole, the whole like, um, 
the the fear and the repression over just using the word ceasefire mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. makes it seem like that is the end goal of this whole operation 100%. you know like that's the like that's the uh the the final destination when there's still an occupation that needs right. to be ended there's right. still all of these other uh notions that israel as an idea perpetuates mm-hmm. that people don't talk about this not idea of like this idea of nation states this idea of uh judaism as a race and not a religion mm-hmm. which which necessarily isolates jews of other races who are mm-hmm. <laughs> who are treated all types of different ways in israel you know mm-hmm. it's just like i i i i've been doing this joke for a while about how like i think the government can just kill you based on some bullshit belief that you have and act like that belief is worth <laughs> achieving because you were assassinated over it you yeah, know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah it's like if malcolm x was killed a few years earlier when he still believed white people were made in a lab by scientists like we would live in a different america you Hilarious. know what i mean like it would be yeah. a completely different world it's like people act like things are important just because not that ceasefire is not important but the, people act like things are important necessarily because the government doesn't want you to do them you know? right yeah yeah, yeah. A bunch fairness, of shit the, go- the government wants doesn't want you to do that has no bearing on your actual life. Yeah. You know? In fairness, Pete Buttigieg is actually short for petri dish because he was grown in a lab. So yeah, that's true. Oh he, yeah, of course he is. Of course. No. Yeah, he, no, no, no. Some white people absolutely <clears throat> were grown in a lab, but yeah. just the race as a whole. Nah, nah. Some of y'all grew out of trees or some shit. Listen, I know. <laughs> That's what my parents told me. Yeah. I'm personal family friends yeah. with uh, what is his name, Doctor Yakub? <laughs> is that yeah. the Yakub? Yakub who, <laughs> yeah, who yeah. created the white people in the lab. Yes. Uh, great yeah. scientist, brilliant, brilliant thinker. Um, you know, sometimes you make a mistake. I love the idea that white white people were like a the lab leak theory. Uh, we, we accidentally got out and they're like oh fuck they're everywhere now oh they've colonized um yeah no i agree completely uh you know the the, the ceasefire is like the first thing on the agenda um for multiple reasons uh and you know uh, all of them good reasons but mm-hmm. uh the fact that they you know that Noah Tishby makes a video specifically being like, you know, today the Grammys were 9 11 because yeah. the Eurythmics lady, you know, said ceasefire. It's like, it, it makes it seem like that and that alone will be the end of everything. Like everyone's going to be like, oh, they, okay, they stopped doing a genocide. Guess we can all go home. And, uh, you know, they haven't even, of course, begun to address anything else. Anything else is just like painted as anti-Semitic. I mean, so is a ceasefire. Um, you make a good point, though, about like, who is it for? Right. Like, their audience yeah. is becoming increasingly small. Right. Like they're, they're mm-hmm. making content for fewer and fewer followers every day. Yes. And yeah, it's just it shows like their desperation to cling on to power, to cling on to a narrative that's clearly dying. Yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. weird because I mean I can't imagine any normal person watching that, uh, you know Noah Tishby video and then seeing Annie Lennox say a milk toast ass statement, uh, much appreciated, uh, <laughs> milk toast ass statement, and then Sometimes being milk like, "Toast is good." You yeah, know, yeah. Tasty. Listen, I like French toast. All yeah. kinds of toast are good. Some toast is more milky than others. This was a milky one, and you know what? I appreciate it. Uh, but the fact that like, like, did Noah think anyone who's normal is going to agree with this or is she just look like a fucking psychopath to the rest of the world? And then that, you know, begs the question, why are these Hasbaras like now very comfortable being like, yeah, I'm psycho. What of it? Like, that right. is the weirdest fucking yeah. thing. Yeah. My question here is also, how the fuck did she get to the Grammys? What is she doing? Know. What? Who invited her? I know. What are these people? And like, that that brings me to a um, a point that I don't think is that controversial, but that mm-hmm. 
there are people absolutely trying to clout chase and like rebuild their dying careers over this shit. Like, Mike, who the fuck was thinking about Michael Rappaport before <laughs> October 7th? Who was thinking yes. about Brett Gelman in any other way aside from he's just the ugly, ratty the ugly dude guy from, from every Stranger fucking, Things? Yeah, yeah like who is thinking about these fucking people? Who yeah. cared about what Chelsea Handler was going to do next? You yeah. know, who gave a fuck? Yeah, I had to like would, look up who the fuck Noah Tishby was, and I was right. like, oh. Oh, she was on CSI. All right. Was like, she? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's no what she's idea. from. If you're wondering who is this fucking lady who keeps going out and saying like genocide good, it's she's a CSI lady. Had no clue. That's her shit. Could have never known. It's you know, it's like, fucking. I was I closely some, following the career of Amy Schumer. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Yeah, you know, Amy, <laughs> yeah, Amy Schumer was one of those people who like came out early, early, and just was like, "Hey, don't forget, I'm the, the biggest psycho out here." Um, yeah. And I she feel, said all Gazans are rapists. Yeah, she, put, she, she said she did say that. Yeah, she posted all, something that had that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, all Gazans are rapists. And then she she did the uh, the classic thing that was happening like October, November, uh, which was yelling at uh, black people. <laughs> <laughs> for oh, yeah. for like the fact that well i you know they posted a black square and they're just like and now you can't even look the other way while i genocide an entire so group of you children. can't you can't uh you can't side with me when i posted a black square and blocked out all the actual information that was supposed to be going out during that period <laughs> yeah. oh no yeah. oh no what are, how is our transactional relationship gonna <laughs> gonna flourish from this point yeah yeah man i mean like it's been so funny to watch zionists realize that black people don't like oppression yeah you yeah know? it's true it's really amazing you know it's what uh on that point uh it's one amazing to me that like uh that people are realizing that we have a sense of like nuance and mm -hmm. an ability to discern what is and isn't actually oppression yeah. and two it's been amazing and this is this goes beyond just now but it's the same thing people are doing with like uh with like Hamas and the Houthis and all of these groups that are yeah. that are making choices about what they stand for you know I'm not yeah like they always they love to assign some other identity to like why to like who is actually backing it like this comic that I spoke to the other day went up on a show right before me and his whole half his set is about how like it was all white women at these protests. It's all white women at Black Lives Matter protests. It's all white women at uh, at the uh, pro-Palestine protests. As though we can't just make the choice and right. the discern for ourselves that uh, that these things are bad. Yeah. yeah. And as though it's something is necessarily not worth uh, fighting for just because white women don't like it or do like it. <laughs> you know? Right. Or, or just like I've seen a lot of kind of like classic liberal race essentialist politics where they're just they feel very much like you um you know uh they're you being a black person have nothing to do with this situation and uh you know therefore for you to come out and talk you know be pro-palestine is uh you know is it must come from some deep-seated anti-semitism without realizing that like I think anyone uh, can look at an apartheid state and be like apartheid bad. Uh, mm -hmm. I think especially people who are non-white are going to look at this and go like, yeah, for sure. This is bad. This is I've, I've seen this before, you know, also yeah. the police in the United States train in occupied Palestine. They do yeah. so-called counterterrorism drills, Deadly police chiefs, deputies. They're all flown over at uh -huh. the expense of the ADL who runs the program. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's affecting everybody because it's our money as well going over there. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think like that's for me, the ultimate trump card for anyone who's just like, well, what do you even have to do with it? It's just like just remind them that you're an American and that uh, your tax dollars fucking go to uh, killing children. And I think that is a perfectly reasonable thing to uh, tie you into the situation, if not on a race essentialist basis. They'll be like, do you want to work in show business? Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That is that is always uh, the interesting one is how many. Uh, yeah. You know the threaten your I, work. Yeah. I will say the um, the tax dollars thing has been an interesting uh, point of departure for me, mm -hmm. only because my view is like 
we should be opposed to this whether or not we're the ones oh, paying for, sure. for it. Yeah. And also at the federal level, our taxes are not paying. For, they don't need our tax money. They, these are right. political choices that they make regardless of whether or not we endorse them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, fucking what's her Stephanie Kelton, Bernie Sanders economic advisor has a book on this on mm -hmm. uh, modern monetary theory and the fact that the government literally prints money. They right. don't have, they don't, when you send your tax money back to them, they burn it. They yeah. erase it from the record. That's all that happens. They don't, yes. they don't, you they don't need you to fund them yeah. all tax all taxes do is provision the government and create demand for the currency so right. like i think when people say that uh it's just this it's this notion of uh of guilt that mm -hmm. bothers me um they're like i don't think we should be operating from a place of like uh of personal guilt we should be sure. operating from a place of fuck this this is inhumane and disgusting you yeah, know, I, I think I, that argue, yeah. I fully agree with what you're saying. And yeah. thank you so much for making that point. I think that argument is like not for the people who have empathy, right? right? Yeah, it's for, it's for the people who we've <laughs> run through all of the tape. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still yeah. Convinced, hey, and they're hey, like, exactly. no, I don't think the yeah. genocide. I see it. I see the bodies piling. <laughs> like, Thirty thousand dead. People yeah. still under the rubble. I see all that. I'm still not convinced. Like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, man, babies, you're, you're, babies. Man, you're fucking paying for it. You're paying yeah. for it. Right. You're paying for it. Don't, you, don't you dislike potholes? You know what I mean? And then <laughs> That's it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And then my truck does get fucked up and it's like okay great we're just trying like, to cast a wide net okay, here yeah cool. yeah, yeah hey. all right your, your alignment is off and therefore yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm not gonna be a purist about why with us. <laughs> yeah it is it is absolutely for people who uh, no matter how many dead babies they see they're like yeah, yeah but they're not really human to me but then you bring up taxes and they're like okay okay well yeah. that's mine yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, you make a fantastic point. We should be operating from a place of decency as opposed to guilt or coercion. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, that would that would be uh, preferred. Um, but you know, the the other interesting part about the the whole Grammys thing to me was, um, you know, Noah Tishby being like, "Oh, they hijacked the Grammys." Um, so I don't know if you guys watched the Grammys at all, um, but. Not. Yeah, no. but uh, the Grammys were not hijacked um, by pro-Palestinian voices. But this did happen at the Grammys um, when the speaker, uh, the speaking at the Grammys um, was the CEO of the Recording Academy, Harvey Mason Jr., uh, who uh, gave a little speech at one point during the Grammys. Full of music. Every one of us no matter where we're from, is united by the shared experience of music. It brings us together like nothing else can, and that's why music must always be our safe space. When that's violated, it strikes at the very core of who we are. We felt that at the Bataclan Concert Hall in Paris. We felt that at the Manchester Arena in England. We felt that at the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival in Las Vegas. And on October 7th, we felt that again when we heard the tragic news from the Supernova Music Festival for Love that over 360 music fans lost their lives and another 40 were kidnapped. That day and all the tragic days that have followed. I mean, it, it continues going, but it just, the fucking, the fucking nerve to just be you know, like, yeah. <laughs> to yell about someone fucking saying ceasefire one time when literally the CEO of the recording academy, the fucking people who put on the Grammys, is like, just so you know, we're gonna talk about Israel for a while. Yeah. Do you know what I'm realizing? Mm -hmm. Gaza's mistake is that they have not had enough music festivals. A hundred percent. There's not a Coachella in if Gaza. They had yeah. had a music festival, then they might have gotten mentioned and be worthy of sympathy. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But now that you know, when Israel is doing you know mask bombing campaigns and destroying civilian infrastructure, it's like none of that infrastructure includes a polo field. Dude, it's no so doubt. hard to have a rave without electricity, bro. Yeah, I know. I know. It sucks. You you know what I I have to applaud some people some people for this uh namely the people that were in my DMs on October 8th and haven't <laughs> said shit since yeah is oh, yeah. that 
I think either it's one of two possibilities. Either they realize they were wrong and mm. they have since backed down, but they feel like I I shouldn't say anything publicly because I don't want to I don't want to like I don't want to look like I was openly wrong. You know, right? What I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or two, which is what I what what bothers me about people like Noah Tishby is that either uh, they realize that the logical conclusion of business as usual is the thing that they want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If nothing happens, Gaza gets destroyed. Right. You know, and, yes. and empires continue to expand. The environment continues to get destroyed mm -hmm. and all of the, all of these terrible logical conclusions of, you know, uh, social critique with no economic critique, all of those things happen, you know? Yeah. Yep. So yeah. like, I it just like, just shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like they're they're playing your shit right next to the to the shit that you're against. Right. So it, at at most it's it's uh it cancels each other out. Right. You know? Yeah. So like why do you why are you yeah. up in arms about them right. just you can you can live eye. your life and just be like the status quo got me. You know? Yeah. Status quo is uh, w things will turn out fine. I don't actually need to do shit. Yeah. I can just yeah. live my life and watch people get theirs taken. Yeah, the it's like what MLK. Them. Oh, sorry. It's like what MLK Jr. and Malcolm X said about the white moderate, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. they're the ones who actually stop the progress through bureaucracy. They slow things down mm -hmm. to a point where just the status quo allows for suffering. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. The people who are on like the other end of the spectrum, they're going to be doing violence regardless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is wild, too, because this is it's such an inversion of like to see Tish be complain about it, it's such an inversion of what like the reality is. And I feel like this is the basis of Hasbara is to uh, take whatever the reality is and do like a complete inversion of it and be like, no, opposite happening. People getting fired for being pro-Israel, uh, you know, people uh, keep going on award shows and 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 being anti-Israel. It's just like. You, you to the point at which you're like i understand half of this is for me to uh go fucking crazy you know and to be yeah. gaslit mm -hmm. into a, a point where my reality is just like am i a fucking crazy dude at a bus stop yelling about shit like am i insane but the other half of it seems to be to keep their own uh like to keep their own in check like just to mm -hmm to create a nice little bubble, a nice little sphere of a separate reality in which you can kind of like be a Zionist in comfort, knowing that you're correct because these people are saying this stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's fucking us, us all agreeing is hilarious by the way. About <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. We are in a bubble. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, it is, you know, it's it's something that I've seen too many people do. It's one of the reasons I, um, uh, early on, uh, you know, the October, November, whatnot, um, I just uh, decided to start yelling at Josh Gad. Um, uh -huh. I don't know if you guys have followed. Who's that? Josh Gad is... Uh, he's he, the snowman from Frozen. He's the snowman from Frozen. Um, he's a, he's a famous uh, sing and dance and plump dude. Uh, incredibly, incredibly famous guy. You can look him up. Uh, I'll look him up right. And uh, so Threads came out. And if you got, if you're not familiar with Threads, Threads was like Instagram's answer to uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it became like Zionist hub. It was like the place to go if you were someone who was like, it is my time to be scared. Um, it's scared of anti-Semitism, scared of Arabs. You went to threads and <laughs> Josh Gad seemed to be kind of like the guy on threads who was like, I'm going to find every single news story that says anything anti-Semitic that has happened. Uh, and, and I'm going to put that out just to keep everyone scared and afraid. And, uh, and I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. So I think I called him uh like an animated snowman ass coward and then he he follows me on threads so he saw it and and he unfollowed me but um oh man so anyways I'm so sorry for your my sacrifice. career's in the fucking um, tubes dude it's not, just I'm, not josh gad josh gad yeah. i don't think not he's, the gad man 
So I don't think he's ever going to go on my The Wire Gattaca. Rewatch podcast, which is too bad because I think he would have been a great guest. Um, have Have either of you two... Um, I don't like, talk to my best friend anymore, so I right. get it. Yeah, yeah very similar. You, yeah, yeah. That's kind of like me and Josh Gass. Someone, yeah, someone who I literally <laughs> grew up with from middle yeah. school uh, yeah. started dating a Zionist, and we don't talk anymore. So they don't just steal land; they stole my best friend. Damn! Oh wow! You know, Damn. Uh, Yadoya, what about you? Do you have uh, friends that you have lost in the uh, last, you know, four months or whatnot? Uh, you know, just my emotionally abusive high school girlfriend, a guy I did a cappella with in college, another dude who I did nothing with in college, and my manager. Uh, oh, oh yeah, and, yeah. I lost the know, man. So forgot about her. Yeah. Briefly. yeah so, oh, t- I, w- I would like to hear more about uh the managers. That so, how did that? How did that conversation go down? I had a manager. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You go. Oh no, no. Go, go, go ahead. No, nah, please. You run it up. Uh, okay. Well, we had. We had a uh, conversation and he was uh, he had apparently been reaching out to a lot of his clients to sort of air out his feelings on the matter. Uh, The short story is he's obviously a Zionist, grew up a Zionist Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just picked now to reveal that. And (laughs) Uh we we talked about it and it was, again, a situation where I'm coming into this thinking we're having a good faith discussion about like, you know, maybe you're just not thinking straight about this. And on his end, it felt like, and I did tell him this, it felt like, Oh, you're just, you're just kind of scanning to make sure I'm not, uh, anti-Semitic. Right. And, uh, it just felt unfair to me and not good. Yeah. And so so obviously like we just it just couldn't work beyond that. We had and I and my what I told him from my perspective is like um I don't believe in nation states. I believe that these things are they necessarily uh the logical conclusion of them is what is happening now. Mm-hmm. Just every every state is at a different stage in the same process. They are all even this even the term ethno state is misleading because they're all in some sense founded on absolutely some ethnic mm-hmm. or or f- like imagined cultural identity 100%. that they have to f- that they have to fabricate for the state to exist yes uh, or this national identity to exist and so I don't support an Israeli state I also don't support a Palestinian state because mm-hmm. I don't want to see them go through that. And right. having go through having to be the bad guys in another situation like mm-hmm. this, mm-hmm. and I told him all of that, and his conclusion was, "But don't you think Israel is an exception? Don't you think <laughs> that if anybody has a nation state, it should be Jewish people?" I was like, "No, is because a, just, because um, imagine how do you say that out loud? I don't like, understand yeah. people." Well, and that's also who, that's who the tax argument is for, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. And also, like, imagine a world where Israel is the only nation state that right. exists, and the and you look. What at are you nations, working for Netanyahu's policy department? What's going on? Right. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just like, if you see how see them how I see them, which are these like constantly expanding uh, corporate political wings of corporate power. Mm -hmm. You know, if Israel is the only one that exists, then the version of like global, uh, what is it? Uh, globalism that, yeah, that like fucking Alex Jones types think, right, right, right. Then that's what that is. Yeah. 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 Then it's real because they have no, they have no option but to expand constantly until they control the whole world. So right. no, I don't think they should be the only fucking nation state. It's crazy. <laughs> that is that is the most insane thing, especially after hearing a very cogent argument against statism where you're just like, oh, shit, that's right. Ethno state. Every state is in, in essence an ethno state, yeah. you know, a- and then just being like, yeah, but. Shouldn't Jews have an ethno state? Right. Like, that was wow. actually their argument in front of the UN. Yes. They were like, Jews deserve the opportunity to colonize because you all colonized. You right. all yes. colonized the native people in the United States, Turtle Island, right? And yeah. so it's like, if mm-hmm. you don't allow for this exception for Jews, you are anti-Semitic. That's what they said on official yeah. record. Yes. yes. It's yes. it's it's the most insane argument, too, because it's like, it it is, uh, you know... 
it's wild how hard how long it's held up truly right well it, it's I mean, a crazy that's thing the foundation of zionism is that right argument. and and mm -hmm. it's also well, like that argument jewish is... zionism right there's christian yeah, sure. zionism that predates it well yes yeah, yeah right but so like the 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 argument itself uh it also works on this like very like liberal level of just kind of like very girl boss type thing where you're just like mm. oh so it's wrong for jews to do a genocide yeah. but everyone yeah. else gets to isn't that a little bit exclusion exclusionary against you and you're just like you've got to be a fucking psycho to bring the idea of inclusivity into a genocide it's i'm just i'm just picturing patty harrison delivering that line <laughs> It, it's bad for Jews to do a genocide. You mean I can't do a genocide on my birthday? It's so fucking sick. And and just in general, uh, my thoughts on the idea of the right to exist being this like phrase that we've kind of like turned into a, a meaningless thing when... The idea of it, I think, essentially is, at least in the American like consciousness, the right to exist is not just about existing. It's like they have the right to do a genocide. They have the right mm -hmm. to do occupation. They have a right to exist as they are existing. And like you wouldn't put it in that, you know, frame. Instead, it's put into this the frame of the Holocaust, where it's like, haven't they earned the right to this land? Um, don't they have it like aren't they the exception to any kind of rules that we would place on any other nation states due to this due to the holocaust and uh it's such a i don't know it's just such a fucking sickening argument because you're just like you no no you don't get the right to do a holocaust because you survived the holocaust that's a fucking weird thing to say yeah i mean it really just pr pr highlights this the f reality that rights are kind of just propped up by violence yeah you know yeah that we yeah that you do have the right to do that because you have the force behind you to do that yeah. you know yeah um That's i made a... this point on my on my podcast a while ago but like when people argue about who can and can't say the n-word i'm like yeah if you if you can fight you could say it like i don't know what to tell you bro <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like but what like, if it's, it's in a song simple. what if it's in the song lyrics if i if you can fight or i can't find you then it's then you can say it okay but what if they're like like you learned all of the lyrics and you're just like but i've learned all of them you know uh, then do we have to if, fight if you also have very convenient tourette syndrome <laughs> then yeah sure you got it all right fine zionists are like what if i went to the marches yeah right yeah no <laughs> yeah. straight up yeah yeah it is, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a great time to be um, a comedian. In can I tell uh, you about how my uh, manager dropped? Oh me? yes, please, oh, yeah. please, please. So I didn't even have a conversation with my manager. I showcased at this like college thing, and there were representatives from various colleges as well as cruises, and the U.S. military was mm -hmm. in attendance. And this was day three of the genocide, right? Mm -hmm. So my brain was a little foggy and I went up there and I spoke about Palestine. I brought it up. Mm -hmm. I was like, there's a genocide happening. Everybody should be speaking out on it. Surprisingly, all of the kids applauded. And then, you know, I had a pretty good set. I swore, which I shouldn't have done because it was meant to be clean. But I was like, yeah. I was kind of out of my element. Anyways, I get feedback from my manager and she is like, the U.S. military hates you. And I was like, <laughs> kind of cool oh, is mutual. You know, yeah. uh, <laughs> that's a credit. And, and yeah, that's... they were they were she was like, you swore so much like you dropped F bombs. I was like, they dropped real bombs. Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, and they t she told me that the cruise lines hated me more than coronavirus. I was like, God damn. God damn. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So she just stopped responding to my texts and we do not work together anymore. Damn. Wow. That fucking, yeah. you know. That's oh, also, incredible. there was one college student who had come up to me and she was like, I really loved what you said. You know what I mean? I kind of want to book you for whatever. My former manager walks over, hands her a pamphlet, and she's like, These are my other clients. Damn. Wow. Shit. And like, she and I were having a genuine moment talking about Palestine in this fucking little, you know, that garden is incredible. gnome. 
That fucking yeah. sucks. Yeah, I, I keep hearing these stories about people losing their, uh, you know, their managers. They're losing their agents. And, uh, like, a good portion of the stories uh, aren't just, like, a ghosting that happened. But they're, like, first they get yelled at. First, they yeah. have like this long, drawn out conversation in which, you know, both people are stating their political, you know, ideologies or, uh, you know, or just like their humanity in the case of people who are pro Palestinian. And, uh, and then they just get yelled at by their managers or agents and then fucking, and that's it. I know someone who had to, yeah. got dropped by their uh, manager, by their agents, and uh, is waiting to fire their lawyer because their lawyer also yelled at them but they just they just haven't had the conversation yet where it's like okay well now we can't work together it is uh it is fucking crazy me and my manager broke up over palestine i think um a while back though this was when i was working at uh i used to work at uh, AJ Plus, which is Al Jazeera's uh, online channel, and I had a comedy show with my uh, now wife, um, and I was doing these episodes about like Israel and stuff. And one day, my manager just calls me, and he's just want he just wants to talk about Israel with me. And um, I was, you know, I was trying to be nice about it. I was like, listen, you know, I get that you think Israel's good, uh, but. Israel is not. It's very racist. You know how we're against racism, right? And he was like, well... And uh, the conversation did not go great, but we didn't break up. And then it wasn't until I uh, moved uh, back to L.A. uh, that he gave me the... I don't have the bandwidth to help you get general meetings right now. Mm. And I was like, fuck. Uh, I think this is his way of breaking up with me. And then uh, Sammy Obeyed had the same manager. And then uh, later... Like a few months later, he hits me up and he said, fuck, I got bandwidth by our manager. <laughs> and he, he also lost the same one. So I assume it's due to Zionism. It is. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's the biggest crime of the Zionists is making it harder for us to get generals. Yeah. I mean, well. I Add that like to least... the website cataloging the crimes. <laughs> <laughs> crimes by Israel dot com. Check out who's lost their management. Um, before we go, people who haven't lost their management have been, um, very, very outspoken, uh, in how pro-Israel they are. Uh, I want to play, uh, a returning Bad Hezbara champion, Ryan, uh, Daniel Ryan Spaulding. Um, I don't know if you guys have watched any of this dude's videos. Um, he is a, um, he's not, uh, Jewish. Um, he loves Israel and, um, man, that's weird. His videos, that's totally organic. Yeah. Totally and, organic and, and not comes from nothing in particular. No, no. Yeah. It's just comes straight from the heart and has nothing to do with anything, uh, other than love. And, uh, here is a recent video of his figured it out yet let me explain something never in the history of the world has there been a genocide that could be ended by a terrorist group handing over hostages and surrendering see that's not how genocide works hitler wasn't like hey hand over our hostages and surrender jews and we'll stop killing you it's a war. You see, what's actually happening is that the Islamist Nazi terrorist group that's constantly telling us that they want to genocide the Jews and destroy Western civilization is trying to genocide the Jews and take over Western civilization. It's called ideological subversion. I, I There's like, I, there's only so much you can take of this um, before you want to set yourself on fire. You can't convince me so that's much. not an ostrich. <laughs> What the fuck? This is a I real swear. person, not AI. No, this is not AI. There's uh... where did that ostrich get that fabulous coat? <laughs> Jesus Christ! I I feel like um, I would I would take a step back and look at the quality of my argument. If every time I talked about my ideological opponent, I had to also be like the Iran-backed Nazi, really, really bad, <laughs> yeah. very bad group of people. Yeah. Like, you not? 
Yeah. They keep yeah, adding just, notches. Yeah. Just like, yeah. It's like, what is it? The no good, re- very bad, no good day. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. Like it's a yeah, terrible, yeah. horrible, no good, very bad Hamas. Lemony yeah. Snicket presents <laughs> Hamas. <laughs> yeah. But this guy has been like, uh, you know, his, his whole uh, angle is that um, he's, he's gay and he loves Jews, which cool. Uh, always welcome. <laughs> As those those are like mutually exclusive. Yeah, right. <laughs> but to him, he's very much a place for the angle that it is mutually exclusive, and his uh, his big target is usually for some reason purple haired girl. Um, he mentions purple purple haired girl at least once a video, and it's always in the context of uh, they like Palestine. Uh, we'll continue with this fucking. That's why there's nonsense. a bunch of purple haired girls yep. roaming the streets chanting, There is only one solution anti fada revolution. They do have a really good chance. So wake the fuck uh, up. He's Stop jealous. being a bunch of hipster Nazis and leave these Jews alone. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm a power gay at the Sundance Film Festival and I'm going to find some gorgeous Jewish producer to hook me up with a TV show because I have a genius level IQ. I'm fabulously funny and I single handedly ended global. I'm sorry, but th- that he ends the video. He ends it with the clearly anti-Semitic trope of I'm at Sundance. Now I'm going to go find a Jew <laughs> to give me a TV show. Yeah. This fucking guy. I swear Zionists to God. hate anti-Semitism when they're not the ones doing it. Right. If they don't get to do it, they are so upset. They're like, you're doing it. No, it's our thing. The, oh. of, all, of all the things that I thought would be yesified throughout <laughs> history. Uh, <laughs> I thought... Now, obviously, the word yes, that's for uh, sure. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. yeah yes. That's how you get yes. That's but, yes. like, I thought genocide would be way down the list. I know. You know what I mean, I know. Yeah. I know. It, I didn't expect it to be so quickly yossified. Yeah. It just seems like, you know, there's just so many other things to yossify before you yes, get to genocide. queen. Yeah. Let the people eat nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, prime minister. <laughs> Fucking hey. Yeah, it is, uh, you know, the state of Zionist comedy is uh, is fucking bleak. It's fucking bleak. And, um, you know, but uh, the difference is, is they all get to keep their managers. And yeah. That's do a lot we, of fun. And jobs. Yeah. I mean, do we want to talk about what's his name? Uh... Yeah. I mean, before we get out of here, uh, this is uh, talking about a video that blew up. Now, listen, when you put your clips online as a stand-up comic, one of the things you're hoping for is for people to see it. Um, and you want, you know, to gain a little bit of, uh, traction. You want to get some followers and whatnot. Um, Dan Adut did this recently only to have his video, uh, blown up by, uh, a stitch from Mayim Bialik. Uh, I think that's her name. And is, I'm not, is she Blossom? Is that who she is? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, that's what she's famous for. Um, also was, you know, very much trying to be the next Jeopardy host, also didn't get that, and has pivoted to Genocide Apologia. And, uh, yeah, so we have a little stitch here from stand-up comedian and guy who I did a Hanukkah stand-up comedy show with at the Skirball Center a few years back, um, Dan Adut, and, uh, we're just gonna... Check it out and through the sea, Palestine will be free. I'm like, this is the new from the window to the wall. <laughs> yeah, it's a little genocidal, but the beat slaps. Oh boy. Yeah. Listen to ours, they're awful. Because Jews like to convince you with a bunch of facts and minutia. Rather than just sticking to a catchy tune. Right? They're like, okay, guys, we're gonna do one of those chants, okay? It goes, when I say X, you say Y. X, Y, X, Y. Okay, here we go. When I say that in 1948 there was a UN partition plan giving a separate state of Palestine alongside the state of Israel, and the Palestinians rejected it, and the Israelis accepted it, and then there was the War of Independence. I'm sorry, but so we're going uh, to, this is a, this is the setup and punchline. It's just going to be a long string of Hasbara. Uh, m- pretty much all uh, fake facts uh, and was what you're basically taught in school uh, if you're Jewish and even if you're not Jewish about uh, Israeli history. So um, 
Yeah, it, 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 enjoy. Against all odds, we won. And then the you know, really quick, you, please. Notice how he he's adopting a Jewish voice as a character. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. He was like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. anti-Semitic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi. Oh my God. He sounds like a dog. Yeah. Yeah, I I love this when, is how Jews sound, and you should trust me as the voice of Judaism. Right, yeah. It is uh, you know, you gotta take on the anti-Semitic character of the person who you are, you know, defending in this case, I guess. And uh, this is clearly an instance of a joke of attrition, right? Oh, where it's 100%. Like, there's no setup and punchline, there's no actually funny <laughs> bit to it. It's just you keep going until you wear the audience yes, down. This is like yeah. for this is the the goal is clapter at the end where people just go, damn, yeah. you memorized wow. that. You said Even on it. stage, they steal energy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Even on stage, when they're supposed to be providing laughter to the audience, providing energy, they're like, no, no, no. What we do is we take everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, it is like it's draining to watch. And yeah. the crazy thing about it is like what the, the stitch that yeah. Mayim does, I... it like it, it like doubles the factor of tired because you're yep. watching uh, and like it's like you're watching a parallel universe where she's she's laughing but you're not really sure at what yeah it it's, would be like oh sorry go ahead it, it's just uh, sitting through her laughing at this video it was just a reminder that every time somebody stitches a video or every or like when they walk when they post like a, a video of them entering a room or whatever you like there was you're doing this again you're right. watching this again. Yes. Yeah. And you're still and you still find this funny? Yeah. 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 And you it's... don't know where the punchline is cuz you're laughing throughout this whole video where the expectation is obviously <laughs> for you to laugh at the end when it's finally over. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. Great. Yeah, it is weird cuz you 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 know, everyone knows and you're watching a stitch, you're essentially watching a lie, which is why you usually like do a joke out of the stitch. Like, you know, you 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 play along as if, you know, you're uh you know, being uh, the, you're not playing as if you've heard it for the first time. You're like adding to the joke somehow. That's usually what a good stitch is. This is just her pretending she's never, she didn't just watch this video and go like, I got to do a few takes of me laughing at this and I got to make it seem real, real. Um, yeah, it is, it is hard, but you know. It was the six day war where all the Arab armies attacked. And again, against all we have odds, to watch we it all. Watch. Yeah, Do no, we, we don't. I we don't. don't. Like... It is. It, it really. It is. It, it. It really hurts. But you he know, would, he's like, it would be the new window to the walls, but they've blown up every building in Gaza. Yeah, there's um, no windows. There's no walls left. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's um, man. Okay, it's tragic on several levels. One, West Side Comedy Club, fuck that place. Uh, mm -hmm. Felicia yeah. Madison, the owner, was uh was tweeting all types of racist shit about. Uh, Palestinians very early on in the conflict. Mm -hmm. um, they actually they did an episode of uh, Jeffrey Asmus was talking to her on uh, the Comedy Cellar podcast. If that's of any interest to anybody, uh, I actually also, have I have that uh, exact clip you're talking about. Oh, wow. I, I'm, yeah. no, I'm not bothered. Wait, she texted you. For I, I have to, I have to, there's no point in doing this. But I'm not going to read it out. Loud. I, I don't. It will not hurt me. No, no, it's not going to hurt okay. you. Feelings. She's going to be upset with me. You're oh, okay. Good. I mean, uh, so after a few days later, um, you wrote me. Disappointed to see Jeffrey on your lineup. Even UTS was UTS. UTA. Well, UTA, you wrote, United Talent Agency. UTA, yeah. oh, you, you wrote yes. Okay. UTA is next to S on the keyword. UTA dropped Susan Sarandon. He is harassing me and very pro Palestinian. What are you going to do, emoji? I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? So, if you're not sure what that uh, was, that was uh, a. Uh, a booker the person who owns is it west side uh comedy i i that's what i thought initially but i think it's just a booker um who uh, uh is writing to other clubs to try and get uh pro-palestinian comedians uh blacklisted yes oh, yeah. um, i had zionists reach out to every single comedy club in los angeles to make sure that i don't get booked there Jokes Man. on them. I already don't get booked there. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> High five. That'd be sick if some of them, some of them hadn't heard of you. They're like, oh, this guy's pretty oh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, now he's a veils, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, regarding that, uh, that clip of Dan. So I also have some, uh, some history with him. I mm -hmm. used to work with him on a show 
uh, for the the crew with Kevin James, which he was on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wrote for and used a fake name. Um, Keenan A. Kell was the name, if anybody's wondering. Nice. Um, and I I reposted that clip, and uh, what did I what did I even say? Um, I think you wrote Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's since he's since blocked me, so I can't actually view my own tweet. <laughs> oh respond. damn! But uh, he res- I can he responded. Uh, hey, Yadoye, it's me, Dan. Remember, I gave you a ride home from set. We would laugh and talk about comedy and stuff. Not that we're close friends or anything, but I expect you to reach out to directly if you had an issue, rather than pile on with all the other anti semites. Uh, love the tacitly calling me an anti semite, and uh, I responded here. You're right, man. I should have reached out directly. I'm just curious if you understand what you're doing here, both perform, both performance wise and genocide denial wise. <laughs> I think is the best burn I've ever. <laughs> That's pretty great. Um, and went on with the with a couple of things. Uh, I just don't understand how the grossly misinterpreted facts you outline in this quote unquote bit could possibly justify killing nearly thirty thousand people. Uh, and he finally, after almost a week, responded today, well, at least you're classy about it. Go ahead, take your screenshot, get your likes. Good bu- good luck, buddy. Um, to which I'm- I responded, you're making jokes, very bad and boring ones, mind you, about a <laughs> genocidal campaign that's building toward a broader conflict in the Middle East. If, it were, if I were you, I'd worry more about how I look in the broad scope of history than whether the people rightfully criticizing me are classy or not. So, mm, beautiful. you know, as someone who hates conflict, I'm pretty proud of myself right now. I, I, uh, I, that was a great exchange. Kudos. Yeah. That was, yeah. we call that a deadly exchange. No, that was oh, very, damn. very good. Uh, I mean, and listen, I, I fully expect uh, to hear from Dan uh, as well. I mean, it's, it, it's something that I've low-key avoided because I just know so many fucking Zionists in the comedy community that I'm just like, oh, man, like, you know, fucking... Uh, how many I, I don't even know how many bridges I'm uh, I'm burning but from I think you made a perfect point which is just like well what are the jokes you're making here actually about like yeah it's the justification of uh, a continued genocide against the Gazans and under the fucking totally weaselly uh guise of your slogans scare me Yes. Like fuck. But off also with I'm that jealous shit. of them. Yeah. Also yeah. I'm jealous. I wish they were catchy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is it's like uh you know, it is uh one of hey, the remember when Jews things. took pride in the copy we wrote? I know. <laughs> Those were the days. But yeah, it's 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 sickening to to kind of just like watch people um completely for lack of of a better word, appropriate the uh you know traumas that others are taking right now and being like well i'm also dealing with trauma because i'm hearing a phrase and i'm imagining uh a genocide what if a genocide happened to me is the fucking most disgusting thing to say while a genocide is being perpetrated in your name in the name of protecting you specifically it's one of the reasons that i think i mean me personally and then also i'm sure michael uh finds it uh morally abhorrent when people uh, uh, are, you know, Jewish and decide to either not say anything or to fully, you know, back the state of Israel doing destruction, because it's like they're saying it's for our benefit. And that's the most fucked yeah. up thing. That's why I have to. I say mean, yeah. it's, it's like you said, it's like, first off, it comes from human decency, right? right? Like, it doesn't matter what religion you are. No religion should support a genocide. Yeah. But then on top of it. You add the added context of what happened to Jews in World War II. You add the added context. My family, there were people that my family that were murdered in the Holocaust. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And so it's like, uh, how could I possibly allow the same thing to happen to Palestinians right now? Right. Like it would be a disservice to the people who died and to the people who made it out. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And at the very least, like... If you're going to do a joke about it, prepare to be dragged. I don't know what to fucking tell you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like 
I won't even go that far. I'll just say write better jokes. Yeah. Don't yes. post, don't post this shit. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I was suspended it, first as a comedian, yes, second yeah. as a Jew. Yeah. It's it's truly not a crime to bomb. It is not yeah. a that is part of the well, process. That's <laughs> up to well, the FCJ actually, right? Well, yeah. well, Depends yeah. where and who and yeah. what the target yeah. is. International law. Yeah. 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 Uh, what we'll uh, say is that but, Palestinians have the legal right to self defense according to the UN. Yeah. yeah. They can bomb at all the comedy clubs that they want. Yeah. Um, but I just like for me to really uh, believe that you're an actual comedian, I I have to know that you're scrutinizing your own work and looking yeah. at a clip that is obviously bad and saying, OK, I, I'll keep this for the records. I'm not going to post this like yeah. re really that yeah. might be worse than uh, than actually uh, than what he said. Yeah. You know, yeah. only because there are plenty of other comedians that are funny whose jokes have just as fucked up implications. A hundred percent. That joke right there. Um, yeah. yeah. I talked to David Wengro, um, if you're familiar on my podcast, he's the co-author of Dawn of Everything mm -hmm. um, with David Graeber, um, who also wrote Debt, The First 5,000 Years, Bullshit Jobs, all these other books. Yeah. Um, and one of the most important statements I got out of that conversation from him is that every everything and everyone is political and it's mm -hmm. just a matter of whether or not you are deliberate about that right whether or not you do it on purpose and this is my message to every other fucking comedian regardless of where you stand on israel and palestine uh and and genocide happening in front of your face mm. like i think we collectively as people need to start being cognizant of what the fuck we're saying and taking responsibility for our for what we're saying yes. comedians have this bullshit uh like dual notion that our that our words are all are at once so worth protecting under first amendment rights but also don't mean shit right so you yeah. gotta pick one you yes. gotta you gotta pick one either you're doing bullshit uh fart jokes that don't <laughs> matter right or you're justifying genocide on stage and you want to be able to do that <laughs> with right. impunity. Right. You know, yeah, totally. like, via fart jokes. Even. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I personally, I don't believe you uh, can't say anything on stage. I think you can joke about whatever the fuck you want. 100%. There's an audience. There is an audience for everything. Everybody yep. can find their place. But if somebody calls you on this shit, you better be able to fucking stick up for what the fuck you believe in. You fucking bitch. Yes. I swear yeah. to God. And 100%. you better be able to fight. Yeah. You better be able to fight. Yeah. <laughs> like, it all it all boils down to that. You can't it's, just go out there doing, you know, being uh, openly genocidal and then being like you've hurt my feelings. I gave you a ride once. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I, who gives a fuck? <laughs> who, who cares? I I would have got home either way. <laughs> <laughs> that is I love that that is kind of like the comedian equivalent of like I marched with you in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> it's <right>. just, like, <laughs> it's just like but I gave you a ride one time. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Now we you did, won't we look did drive the other way? We did drive through a Black Lives Matter protest, but that's besides the point. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't matter. They were blocking the road. <laughs> uh, on that uh, beautiful note, uh, I want to thank you guys both for coming on this podcast, talking about comedy, talking about what a wonderful world it is, and uh, talking about Hasbara. Thank you, guys. Yes. Uh, where Thanks can Where can people find your work, Michael? Check me out at the Palestine Pod, palestinepod.com. Uh, the Palestine Pod on Instagram, and uh, yeah, I'm around. I'm doing shows in New York. I don't know when this is coming out, but uh, I'll be like today in New York. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be in New York this weekend. I'm opening um, a show in Brooklyn on the 10th. Beautiful, beautiful. Check yeah. him out. Check out uh, the Palestine Pod. Very good podcast. You get a uh, uh, a lot of well deserved uh, praise. I I watch your clips. Oh, thank you. And I'm like, this is a, a great fucking show and a show that has been around for a while, too, which I think is uh, uh, noteworthy because, uh, yeah. you know, uh, we didn't fucking... pop up on October 8th. Exactly. It's <laughs> it, like my ass was making uh, the Wire Rewatch podcasts. And, and then, and then right. at some point I said, fuck, uh, I've yeah. got to yell about something. <laughs> um, so I appreciate well, your you. work. Very kind. And you do. A, that. You do a great job. <laughs> uh, Yodoya, where can people find your shit? Uh man, I'm just vibing right now until I find another job. So you can just follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Yadoye on everything or at Yadoye underscore on everything. 
Uh, that's Y E D L Y E. Uh, but I'm I'll, I'm not doing shit. I'll probably just be playing playing bass somewhere, just okay. vibing. You know, I love it. Hanging out, hanging out, come hang out at the things. show at Brooklyn. Yeah, I'll yeah. come through, man. Yeah, you guys hang out. Let me know how it goes. And all of you out there, thank you so much for listening. Patreon.com slash bad has bara to support uh email us uh any you know questions comments concerns stories fucking you know send a voice memo about the time you spent a summer in a kibbutz in israel and uh you know how how you learned that shit was racist do do whatever just email uh and then go on the fucking subreddit with that that exists now moderated by jp ben all right everyone thanks again so much for listening and until next time, from the river to the sea, please, somebody.